Are we alone in the universe? If we're not alone, where are all the aliens? Arthur C. Clarke once said, Two possibilities exist. Either we are alone in the universe, or we are not. Both are as equally terrifying. Carl Sagan said something similar. If it's just us, it seems like an awful waste of space. Just like the Eternals movie in the MCU. The question, are we alone in the universe, has plagued humanity since the first time we looked up into the night sky. The universe is vast. Carl Sagan, among others, have speculated that the number of civilizations is roughly between 1,000 and 100 million in the Milky Way galaxy alone. Humanity has reached a point in its evolutionary history that we are able to explore the cosmos by sending probes and peering through space-based telescopes. Yet there's silence. Brew some coffee, settle in, open up your mind. Today, science versus conspiracy over coffee, we'll take a look at the Fermi's Paradox. For centuries, there have been reports of strange objects in the sky, and yet the governments of the world to this day have denied the existence of life beyond our own Earth. So we continue to look for absolute proof of the existence of life on another planet. If we were to believe the government that as of right now, there is no proof of the existence of alien life outside our own, you have to ask yourself, how can this be? The visible universe is 93 billion light years across. That's like starting the Eternals now, and you still won't be able to finish the movie by the time you reach the edge of the universe. There should be someone out there, right? We were able to develop and evolve as a species. It only makes sense that this would happen elsewhere too. But where's the evidence? Where are they hiding? We can start to answer this question by traveling back to the summer of 1950 at the Los Alamos National Laboratory in New Mexico. A physicist, Enrico Fermi, who was also the creator of the world's first nuclear reactor, often had lunchtime conversations with his co-workers about various things. One of these conversations led to UFOs. There had been a string of sightings recently. Enrico made a comment, something to the effect of, where is everybody? That comment has sparked a whole field of science hoping to solve the problem. This would soon become known as the Fermi Paradox. There are several solutions to the Fermi's Paradox. The first and simplest is that we just haven't looked hard enough to find life on other planets. We have only just started to find planets outside our own solar system. The first exoplanet was discovered in the 90s and we have only found around 4,000 planets orbiting other stars. We have a long way to go. Then, there's interstellar travel. Currently, it is so incredibly difficult to travel through interstellar space that aliens, like us, haven't mastered the technology to make it possible. Our closest neighbor is Alpha Centauri, which is four light years away. Using current technology, it would still take decades to reach Another theory is that aliens simply decided not to leave their planet or have decided not to come looking for us. Alternatively, maybe they did long ago, however, they have left no trace or any trace of their arrival has been lost to time. But what if we are actually alone in the universe? What if life on this planet is unique to Earth and hasn't happened anywhere else in the universe? Another scary thought is, what if we are the first intelligent civilization to evolve in the universe? The chances of this happening are small, but I'll talk about that in a few minutes. One possible resolution to the Fermi Paradox is that life in the universe must first pass through what is known as the Great Filter in order to reach the level of technology that is needed to make contact with other beings. What is the Great Filter? It's the idea that a catastrophic event, either natural or man-made, causes intelligent life to be destroyed on their planet. 
before having the chance to explore the universe. If this theory is correct, we have no way of knowing if we have already survived the Great Filter or if it's still to come. This threshold might be a barrier to the evolution of intelligent life. The main conclusion to this argument is that the easier it is for life to evolve to our stage, the bleaker our future chances probably are. The idea of the Great Filter originated with a guy by the name of Robin Hansen. He's an associate professor of economics at George Mason University in Virginia and a research associate at the Future Humanity Institute of Oxford University. Robin's argument is that the failure to find alien civilizations in the observable universe must imply something is wrong with one or more of the arguments that advanced intelligent life is probable. He developed a list of stages intelligent life must advance through to reach the Great Filter. Step 1 is finding the right star system, suitable for supporting life. Stage 1. A planet capable of harboring life must form in a star's habitable zone. 2. Life itself must develop on that planet. Stage 3. Those life forms must be able to reproduce using such molecules as DNA and RNA. Stage 4. Simple cells must evolve into more complex cells. Stage 5. Multicellular organisms must develop. Stage 6. Sexual reproduction, which greatly increases genetic diversity, must take hold. Stage 7. Complex organisms capable of using tools must evolve. Stage 8. Those organisms must create advanced technology needed for space colonization. This is roughly where humans are today. Stage 9 and the final stage, the spacefaring species must go on to colonize other worlds and other star systems while avoiding destroying itself. To help explain the Fermi paradox, we turn to the Drake equation. The Drake Equation was formulated by Frank Drake in 1961 in an attempt to find the number of potential civilizations in the universe. This number can be calculated if we know a few key variables. Unfortunately, some of these key variables remain unknown, which means we can't accurately predict the number of civilizations with intelligent life in the universe. I know this doesn't answer the question if we are alone in the universe or not. If you ask ufologists, then the answer is a definite yes. They've been here for a very long time. Ultimately, scientists need more data in order to conclusively answer the question. With advanced technology like the James Webb Telescope, we hope to answer the Fermi Paradox sooner than later. What do you guys think? And that's it for today for Science vs. Conspiracy over coffee. Hope you enjoyed the show. If you liked the video, hit the like button. If you want to see more content from Science vs. Conspiracy over coffee, hit the subscribe button and turn on those notifications. That way, every time we release new content, you'll get notified. Remember, being paranoid is smart. We'll see you next time.